Welcome to Wannabe Clutter Free, formerly Wannabe Minimalist, the podcast for busy families who are tired of the chaos, fed up with being overwhelmed, and ready to enjoy life again. Each week, we talk about how to let go of the clutter so that you can focus on the things that actually matter. And it's not just physical clutter. We talk about the mental and emotional stuff too, because if it's holding you back, it's time to ditch it. I share what I've done in my own life to declutter, organize, and calm the chaos, but you won't just hear it from me. There are amazing guests too. It's practical, doable, and simple for those of us that want to be clutter-free. You're listening to The Wannabe Minimalist Show with Deanna Yates, episode number 57. On today's show, I want to invite you to a new type of decluttering challenge. It's a bit of a choose-your-own-adventure, but by the end of the month, June 2021, to be exact, uh, you will have decluttered over 450 items, no matter which path you choose. So which are you, an avalanche or a snowball? Listen on to find out. Hey there, my wannabe minimalist friend. Welcome back to the show. My name is Deanna Yates, and I am the creator of littlegreenbow.com and the host of this podcast, The Wannabe Minimalist Show. If you're new to the show, then welcome. On this show, I discuss topics ranging from decluttering and organizing to simple living and creating better mindsets around minimalism. And for the purpose of this show, my website, courses, and my personal life, I define minimalism as intentional living. It's all about living by design, not by default. It's not about depriving ourselves of the things that make us happy. So keep those collections and sentimental items if those items mean the most to you. But give yourself permission to let go of the things holding you back from the life that you truly want to be living. My mission in life is to help you do just that. So today I'm offering you a new decluttering challenge. I'll be kicking things off on June 1st, and so I hope that you'll choose to join me. To be honest, challenges are one of my favorite ways to get anything done. I love having a deadline and a goal, and it's even better if I have some accountability. If you're familiar with Gretchen Rubin's work, uh, the author of The Happiness Project, then you would call me an obliger. An obliger is one of the four tendencies that she covers in her book of the same title. The Four Tendencies book provides a framework that describes how we respond to expectations, both external and internal. She provides a quiz on her website, so I'll leave a link in the show notes so that you can find out if you are an obliger like me or one of the other tendencies. But what does this mean anyway? So as an obliger, I meet outer expectations, but I struggle to meet inner expectations. I am highly motivated by external accountability. I wake up and think, What must I do today? That's what an obliger does. Obligers excel at meeting those external demands and deadlines, and and I'm willing to go to great lengths to meet my responsibilities. But I struggle when I'm doing something solely for my own purpose or gain. Now, that's why challenges work so well for me. And speaking of show notes, I do want to remind you that you can find all of the show notes for today and links to anything I mention, including the Four Tendencies quiz and book at littlegreenbow.com slash 57. Again, that's littlegreenbow.com forward slash the number 57. And there you will also find my latest free resource, the Tidy Home and Vibrant Life Starter Guide. It's a simple but super helpful guide that will show you four easy steps you can take to create a home and life where you and your family thrive. It's completely free and it's my way of helping you on your journey to creating more meaning in your life without suffocating under your stuff. And with that, let's get back to this decluttering challenge and what the heck I meant when I asked if you were an avalanche or a snowball at the top of the show. So I have a question for you. Have you heard of the minimalists? Of course, you probably have. If you're listening to this show and you're into minimalism, how could you not have heard about them? They have that um, documentary on Netflix and they have their own podcast and they, I think they have a book. Anyway, they have a decluttering challenge called the men's game. Now, with this challenge, you declutter items for one month, and the number of items you declutter corresponds to the day. So on the first day of the month, you declutter one item, on the second day, two items, and so on, until the 30th day, when you declutter 30 items. It's a pretty low number of items each day, but by the end, you will have decluttered over 450 items. Is this starting to sound familiar? On the surface, it's great, but... 
they have really strict rules and those strict rules really just don't jive with me. So one of the rules that they have is that if you miss a day, you are out. You cannot make it up the next day. And so that's it. You either have to do it every single day or you're done. The other rule that I really hate is that you have to donate your items every single day. You are not allowed to let them pile up for the week and then donate them all at once. So these two rules are complete and utter deal breakers for me. And I know a lot of other people that they don't jive with as well. I mean, first of all, I'm a busy mom and you likely are too. And that means that life sometimes throws me curveballs that I was not expecting because I'm responsible for raising a human being and humans are unpredictable. Now, it seems that the likelihood of my daughter getting injured or sick skyrockets when I make a commitment to something. So for this reason alone, I need to be able to have some flexibility. I'm not asking for much, but I need to be able to make up a day just in case life gets in the way. And I need to be able to pile donations up and take them once a week because I only get in my car once or twice a week and I don't have a donation center within walking distance from my home. I'm not driving at least 30 minutes round trip to donate one item. That's just not going to happen. And it seems like a total waste of time and completely irresponsible environmentally. So I'm proposing a similar challenge with some flexibility and two paths to choose from. So you can either choose the avalanche or the snowball. Now, these terms, you may already be familiar with them if you're following a debt-free journey. Now, an article that I recently read on Investopedia, well, I actually kind of looked it up for this podcast episode. I'll leave a link in the show notes so that you can uh, check it out yourself. It describes the differences of the two approach as follows, and I'm quoting, both debt avalanche and debt snowball apply to most kinds of consumer debt, personal, student, and auto loans, credit card balances, medical bills, things like that. Each method requires that you list out your debts and make minimum payments on all but one of the items. That one you pay extra money towards with the aim of wiping it out first. And then once it's erased, you target another balance. The extra money you apply toward it could be the minimum sum you had to pay on the erased debt. The two strategies diverge over which debt you single out first. The debt avalanche method, you pay the extra money toward the debt with the highest interest rate. With the snowball debt method, you pay down the smallest debt first and work your way up regardless of the interest rate. Okay, end quote. That was a little confusing. So what it means basically, let's say you have three credit cards that you owe money on. They have varying balances. They have varying um, interest rates. Let's say you have an extra thousand dollars a month that you can put to each to any of them, right? You have an extra thousand dollars above and beyond the minimum payments. So with the avalanche method, you're going to pay down the card with the highest interest rate. You'll take that extra thousand dollars and pay that down. Once that's paid off, you'll take that extra thousand dollars plus any minimum that you were making on that card, and you will put it toward the next highest interest rate and so on and so forth. And that's how you pay it down. With the snowball, you're going to take that thousand dollars and pay off the debt with the smallest amount Um, on that credit card. So you can close out that credit card first and then move on to the next highest balance and then finish with the last one. Hopefully that cleared it up. Not sure it did. So (laughs) that's what we mean when we talk about debt avalanche or snowball. And after some consideration, I thought that these two approaches would be perfect for a decluttering challenge. So let's look at each approach and see how it would work. The first path is that of the snowball. This one is the most similar to the men's game and the debt repayment plan espoused by Dave Ramsey. I'm sure you've heard of him. He's the personal finance author and popular talk talk show host. And with this approach, you start, like I said, with this, you start small and you work up to decluttering more and more every day. So this is a really great approach if you are apprehensive about decluttering or you think you don't have that much stuff to get rid of. It's pretty easy to find one thing to declutter. It's still pretty easy to find seven things to declutter, but you might think that it's really difficult to get rid of 30 things in one go. So if this sounds like you, I highly recommend starting with the snowball approach. I'm Margaret. And I'm Amy. And together we host the podcast, What Fresh Hell? Laughing in the Face of Motherhood. Margaret, I would say you're sort of a where are my keys kind of mom. Correct. Sometimes a where are my kids kind of mom. (laughs) 
Well, you're aiming more of a, we were supposed to leave 35 seconds ago, Mom. I mean, touche. In each episode of What Fresh Hell, we come at a topic from our usually completely opposite perspectives. I bring the research. And I bring kind of the gimlet eye. Like, is that research really going to work, people? And almost 10 million downloads later, we're still laughing. We also talk to experts in the parenting field, plus parents with stories we can all learn from. We make each other laugh, we challenge each other's assumptions, and we have what we think is the best parenting community on the internet. Check out What Fresh Hell? Laughing in the Face of Motherhood wherever you listen to podcasts. The idea is that by the time you get further into the challenge, you will have built up some decluttering muscles and be able to let go of more items. This would also be a great way to get your family members on board. I hear from so many listeners and readers that they are happy to declutter and organize, but their family, mm, not so much. So if this sounds familiar, maybe you could do this decluttering challenge together and go with the snowball approach. The reason the snowball approach works is because it satiates our hunger for instant gratification. So Dave Ramsey is an advocate of the technique because he says, and I quote again, what I have learned is that personal finance is 20% head knowledge and 80% behavior. You need some quick wins in order to stay pumped enough to get out of debt completely, end quote. And I wholeheartedly believe that this works for our stuff as well. As you hit those small wins, you will be encouraged to keep going and hit the bigger wins. The snowball method's biggest advantage is that it helps build motivation quickly. You won't be eliminating debts, but you will be clearing out drawers. So if you start with a space or a single shelf or a drawer that only needs a little decluttering and organizing to feel good and that you are proud of, then you will be able to complete that area quickly, get that win, and move on to the bigger space later on in the month. So now let's look at the avalanche approach. When it comes to debt repayment, this one is the logical approach, and it's really great for people who want to save the most money in the long run because you will pay off the highest interest rate first, which saves the most. That article from Investopedia that I linked to in the show notes shows you how the avalanche method over the snowball approach would save over $500 in interest. It's of course based on their example debts and the payments, but it's pretty compelling to go with this route if you are a numbers person, but it also requires more commitment if it will take longer to wipe out the debt with the highest interest rate. So it's not always the best approach for everyone. Logically, it makes sense, but sometimes our emotional beings take over and we just have to go with those wins. So I do think this one does have some advantages though. So let's look at how this would work when it comes to our stuff. It's not like we can evaluate the items in our home the same way we look at different consumer debt options with the amount of the payment and the interest rate. So there's other things we have to look at. The way to approach decluttering with the avalanche method is to turn the snowball approach on its head. So instead of decluttering one item on day one, you will declutter 30 items and work backwards until you only have to declutter one item on the last day of the challenge. Now, this is a great approach if you tend to start things with gusto and then lose momentum as time goes on. And honestly, no judgment because I am that person. So I am more inclined to take this approach. I tend to bite off more than I can chew and I start things with big plans to follow through. But remember earlier when I said that life tends to get in the way and throw me curveballs? It happens all the time. At least I feel like it always happens to me. So anyway, but doing something that starts with a bigger commitment and requires less and less commitment as it continues just feels like a better fit for me. The advantage with the avalanche approach is that you get bigger wins up front and then you refine throughout the rest of the challenge. If you have a lot of stuff to declutter, then this would be a good option for you. More stuff means it's easier to find a lot of things. And if you have a lot of clutter, it really might be hard just to stop at one thing and go donate. Like if you look around your room, you pick up one thing, you think, well, this doesn't make a difference at all. It might be really deflating and discouraging. So the avalanche approach takes your initial energy and it puts it to good use. 
Now, this would also be a good way to get your family on board with the decluttering challenge if they have a lot of stuff too, or if they're excited by the idea of decluttering. Now, don't scoff and please stop looking at me like I have two heads. Sometimes your family is on board and right now we're having that moment in my house. So yes, sometimes I do know that we're a little crazy. My daughter, she has a birthday coming up though, and so she's currently excited about the idea of decluttering and getting her room more in order after a year of online schooling so that she has space for the potential new toys that she will be getting for her birthday. Now, you can bet we are rocking that momentum and using it to declutter toys and clothes that she has outgrown, as well as things that she doesn't use as much as she thought and we thought that she would. And if you have different personalities in your family, well then maybe you could choose different paths. Remember, I said that this was a choose your own adventure and that's because you can choose either way. Perhaps some declutter the avalanche way and others declutter the snowball way and you meet in the middle of the month when you're decluttering about 14 to 15 items each day. Now, no matter which path you choose, the destination will be less stuff. So. You, it doesn't really matter which way you choose, it's going to be a total win. So what do you think? Are you up for the avalanche or snowball declutter challenge? If so, I want you to come on over to my wannabe minimalist group and join in. I'll have a link to the group in the show notes or you can just search for it on Facebook. It's a completely free group and we're having fun learning from each other on our journeys to more vibrant lives with less clutter. Over the next week, I will be laying out the ground rules and how to participate, so head on over to the group and join in now. But please know that it is a challenge on the honor system. I am not going to kick you out if you can't declutter one day or if you have to adjust a rule to fit your busy life. This is all about positive encouragement and taking the steps that you need and we need so that we can live our full, authentic lives. It is not about shaming anyone into doing something one way. This is not a my way or the highway system. It is just about living a full life with less stuff, less clutter, and less overwhelm. So if that sounds good to you, we would love to have you as part of the group. But again, my goal for this podcast is to just to encourage you on your personal journey. So if joining an online group is not your thing, no hard feelings. You can tag me on Instagram or mention me on Facebook or Twitter. If you'd like me to offer you encouragement outside of that group, I'll have all the links to my social accounts in the show notes as well, or feel free to send me an email. I love hearing from listeners. And of course, we need to talk about how this actually works. So here are some basic rules to get you started. By the time next week's podcast is out, this challenge will have already begun. So I hope you'll be with me on this and join in. First, you will choose if you are doing the snowball or the avalanche approach. Second, let me know if you're joining in the challenge, either in the wannabe minimalist group, on social media, or a quick email. I'm Deanna at littlegreenbow.com, by the way, is my email address. Third, set aside time. Set a reminder in your calendar to declutter each day. It shouldn't take more than 15 to 20 minutes on days where you need to find 20 to 30 items to declutter, and much, much less on those single digit declutter days. Fourth, make a plan for getting stuff out. I recommend dropping off donations as part of your weekly routine, and in fact, I swear by one errand day a week. So if possible, find a convenient place to drop off your donations on your regular errand route. The bonus is that establishing this drop-off point for this month is going to help you keep up with regular decluttering going forward. And fifth, celebrate your success. Give yourself a pat on the back, high five your family, and brainstorm how to celebrate your home being over 450 items lighter. That's just one of you doing it, by the way. And plan a day out or a celebratory dinner, but please resist the urge to buy more things for your home. So are you in? If so, I invite you to come on over and share in the Wannabe Minimalist community on Facebook. Like I said before, the group is completely free and we're having a lot of fun getting to know other like-minded people and offering a safe place to talk about our clutter and how we're tackling it. Introduce yourself, share your thoughts, and let us know if there is something that we can help you with. I would love to hear if today's episode inspired you to join in this new challenge. Plus, I want to know, are you a snowballer or an avalancher? Come over and tell me in the wannabe minimalist community. I'm excited to hear from you and offer encouragement on your journey toward less stuff, more happiness, and a vibrant life that you and your family deserve. 
And don't forget, if you'd like to get your free copy of the Tidy Home and Vibrant Life Starter Guide, you can grab it in all of the show notes for today's episode with links to the articles and the quiz I discussed at littlegreenbow.com slash 57. Once again, you can get the show notes for today on my website at littlegreenbow.com forward slash the number 57. The Tidy Home and Vibrant Life Starter Guide is a simple but super helpful guide that will show you four easy steps you can take to create a home and life where you and your family thrive. It's completely free and my way of helping you on your journey to creating more meaning in your life without suffocating under your stuff. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. But before I go, I just want to take a minute to thank you for listening to this podcast. I appreciate that you choose to spend some of your time with me, and I hope that the information I provide is helpful and encouraging. And if you haven't already done so and you enjoyed today's episode, please be sure to subscribe to be notified of new episodes wherever you prefer to listen to your podcasts. Also, leave a review so more people can find us and discover the benefits of a minimalist lifestyle. If you have anything that you would love for me to cover and discuss, please feel free to reach out too. I would love to hear from you. Let me know how else I can serve you and the topics that you find the most helpful. Feel free to tag me on your Instagram stories, reach out on Facebook or Twitter, or you can send me an email and I'll leave all of those links in the show notes. I look forward to seeing you next week. Cheers. Cheers.